So this morning, we are going to do a one hour long meditation. Um, we will start with about 25 minutes of shamatha, which is basically we'll use the breath as our object of meditation and we'll ground our mind using our breath. So we'll practice mindfulness for about 20, 25 minutes. And once we feel our mind is stabilized at all, I'll give you an opportunity to stand and stretch for a few minutes if you wish. Uh, if you don't want to, you can continue in your shamatha practice. Um, and then we will start on an analytical meditation for another 25 minutes. And at any point, if you feel uncomfortable, don't feel like you have to force yourself to stay seated, to keep meditating, you're welcome to you know, uh, adjust to your body's needs at any point and then return to the meditation when you feel comfortable. Um, I hope on Zoom everyone can hear me okay. If someone can drop a message in the chat. Okay, thank you, Chavi. So... We begin any meditation with setting a strong motivation. And this motivation is kind of like our guiding light. And the clearer we set our motivation, our intention for our practice, the more clear our path will be and the easier it will be. And your motivation, your intention for practicing can be a number of things. It might just be you had some time today on the Sunday and you thought, let's get this opportunity to sit and meditate, to relax my mind, to learn something new maybe. And your motivation can be as simple as that. Your motivation might be to continue a meditation practice that you already have and develop it further, having seen its benefits, its effects on your life. You might have seen how your connection to meditation or to the dharma has impacted your interactions with others, has impacted your own mental state. And you wish to further develop that. to benefit not just yourself, not just your own mental well-being, but maybe those of others as well. And the highest motivation that is said one can have in the Mahayana tradition is that of becoming fully enlightened, fully awakened, to benefit all sentient beings. As a fully awakened being, you can benefit a countless number of beings. and continue liberating beings from samsara. So maybe your intention to sit today for practice might be that. And that doesn't have to be feel attainable right now. It can just be an intention.
taking a moment to make whatever your intention is as clear as possible in your mind and staying with it for a moment. Now we bring our awareness into the body and check our posture. Typically, we sit in the seven point Varochana posture, which is the posture that the Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment in. So, point number one is your legs. Your legs are either crossed or if you're sitting on a chair. Your feet are flat on the floor. And ideally your hips are rising slightly above the knees if you're sitting on the floor. This helps prevent your legs from falling asleep during the meditation. Your back is straight. And I like to imagine a string running through my spine, up through the top of my head and pulling me up very gently, which naturally lowers the head, straightens the spine and relaxes the shoulders and all the muscles around the spine. Your hands can be resting in your lap, in the meditation mudra, which is the right palm inside the left palm, and the, th the thumbs lightly touching. Or resting on your knees, whatever is comfortable. Elbows are held slightly away from the body. And your neck is tilted slightly downwards. Your gaze about two meters on the floor in front of you. And you can keep your eyes open if you wish, if it feels comfortable or half open. Maybe just cracked open to let some light in to help you stay alert. Or if none of those feel comfortable, you can keep your eyes lightly closed as well. Your jaw is relaxed. The tongue touching the upper part of the mouth, just behind the top row of teeth. And finally, you can put a little smile on your face and allow all the tension held in the muscles around the face to relax. Allowing your mind to also come to rest in the body, in the present moment, here in this room. allowing your mind to let go of anything it's carrying with it into the meditation.
And we begin our shamatha practice by becoming aware of the flow of the breath in the body. And you can rest your attention on the breath either at your abdomen as it rises and falls, observing the sensations there. Or as Alan Wallace suggests, at the very tip of your nose, observing the sensations the breath forms there as it flows in and out. You might observe the physical sensations, the temperature, the textures, the subtle movements. Simply staying with the breath in a relaxed way. As if you're sitting on a bench in a park and watching people go by. We're not interfering with the breath or holding on to it in any way. The breath is always there. It's not going anywhere. All we are doing is simply coming to rest on the breath, with the breath. Becoming present to it, to its natural flow.
you might start to notice your mind drifting off into some thought or memory. And when you notice this, there is no need to get upset or frustrated. This is the nature of our monkey mind to jump constantly from one distraction to the next. This is a long developed habit of the mind. So we can maintain compassion towards that mind and allow yourself to simply let go of the thought. Allow it to dissolve away and come back to the breath. The practice of meditation is, in fact, about remembering. Remembering your object again and again. And cultivating that familiarity, no matter how many times the mind runs away. Keep bringing it back. Continue this practice of remembering and resting on your breath for about 10 minutes on your own. Maintaining alertness with relaxation.
You can take two minutes here to stretch if you wish. To take a break before we start the analytical meditation. If you want, you can also stay with the breath. If you don't want to break your meditation. Even as you get up and stretch, you can try to stay mindful of your movements. So yesterday marked the one year anniversary of the day that our teacher Lama Zopa Rinpoche, also the co-founder of the center and the organization which the center is a part of, the FBMT, Rinpoche took the aspect of passing away on April 13th last year. And he loved to talk about the preciousness of this human life. And so in honor of that, we will do a meditation today on this topic. And this is a meditation you can do whether or not you uh, believe in other lives or just this life. That doesn't matter. So again, first checking our posture, straightening the back if needed, adjusting and relaxing any tension where needed. Now bring to mind a time when you felt depressed or angry about your life or some event in your life, maybe a past event. Maybe you feel that way currently in the present moment maybe at some point in the past. Maybe you even felt like wishing you lived a different life or that you didn't have to live this life altogether.
Take a moment to recall the last time you had such feelings. And now take a moment to think about all the other lives you could have had, if not this one. <clears throat> there are many other places one could have been born in, where there might be famine or drought, constant war, Maybe no political rights. There are many other situations with family that could have been there. either having no parents, having lost one's parents, maybe not even being wanted by one's parents. Think about what it would have been like to have been born as an animal, living in constant fear for one's life, unsure of when the next meal will be. As an animal, there's also no potential for growth and development of the mind or for study of the Dharma. And even in the human realm, many, many human beings live almost in the exact same way. Fear for their life, unsure of their next meal, no medical care. Maybe not even any home base. So we can think about the preciousness of just being born as a human, not in one of the three lower realms. But even within the human realm, which is one of the upper realms, each one of us sitting here today still has a very precious life. That is very fortunate if we think about this, the probabilities. Compared to the situation of many millions, even billions of others.
Take a moment to allow your mind to roam across the globe, thinking of all the different other ascension beings and their lives, their conditions. It may be even as simple as having survived birth and been nourished at birth when we were just helpless babies. That itself makes us one of the lucky ones. And we bring to mind all these different beings, these other beings, not to feel a sense of guilt or shame or responsibility, but just to give us some perspective, which often we ignore or don't think about in our day-to-day -day lives. The purpose of this practice is not to force us to feel some kind of pressure. Just to expand our mind and recognize the reality as it is. Recognize the reality that even just this moment of sitting here in this kompa or attending this meditation is so, so rare and precious. And we can think about the many other factors personally that make your life a precious human life. Thinking about the conditions where you were born. Most of us we're born and brought up in India, where there's no major ongoing conflict, no major famine. We have relative accessibility and mobility. And we're also, objectively speaking, the world's largest democracy. That itself gives us many, many freedoms that people in other countries might not have.
We're also born in the 21st century, a time when, again, relatively speaking, we have so much mobility, ability to travel, connection to others, <clears throat> access to information and knowledge, even to Dharma teachings. Even in that sense, about 3 billion people on the planet still don't have access to internet. We can think about how fortunate we are to be born with so much connection. Even the ability to join this meditation on Zoom. We can think also about our physical mobility. Regardless of any limitations, many of us had the ability to come here to this compa to travel. We have a body which is conducive to sitting in meditation. And we have the means, the resources, even the time, this precious one hour to sit here today and meditate. We also live in a time where the Buddha's teachings are flourishing. They are accessible. There are many translations. There are many teachers who are constantly traveling, even to Delhi, and offering teaching. We ourselves have the ability to travel to the Hamshala or to Bodh Gaya. Even to meet His Holiness the Dalai Lama, a living Buddha. Think how precious that is. Having been born in India, we especially have access to all these resources, all this wisdom. And all of us here have received enough education to know some amount of English, which makes all this accessible.
even in the other two upper realms. The conditions are not there to study the Dharma. The other two realms are also filled with sensory pleasures, with day-to-day -day distractions and attachments. Only in this human realm do we even have the, uh, the possibility of coming into co contact with the Buddha Dharma or with any kind of higher teachings. And even within the human realm, the chances of coming into contact with these teachings are so, so slim. The possibility of not having to spend each day consumed in what you will eat, where you will sleep, or your basic necessities. It's so, so precious. As the famous story goes, this precious human life that we have, each one of here, no matter what our conditions, is as rare as if there were a yoke, a little ring floating in the ocean. And the chances that a turtle also swimming in the ocean were to pop its head out through that yoke, taking a breath once in a thousand or a million years. <laughs> the chances of that happening are the chances of having this precious human life. And we can recognize that our conditions are also not perfect. They're never perfect. And we can feel a sense of compassion for that reality as well. At the same time, not getting consumed in those imperfections. Rather acknowledging and feeling gratitude for all the conditions that we do have. To feel even a glimpse of mental peace. To cultivate positive aspects of our mind. to benefit not just ourselves, but to spread joy to others as well. Think how precious that is. And we can think that when we die, whether or not there's more lives after this one, the possibility of ever attaining another birth like this is next to impossible. It might take thousands, millions of years before we attain the conditions again 
to be able to practice and to cultivate our minds towards awakening. We have no idea when these conditions will come again. So we can close by setting a strong motivation to make the most of this precious human life that we have. In whatever ways we can, this doesn't have to mean becoming enlightened within one lifetime. But just maintaining that awareness of the rarity of this life and these conditions and allowing that to inspire and to motivate you each and every day. His Holiness the Dalai Lama says about this precious human life, that every day, think as you wake up, today I am fortunate to have woken up. I am alive, I have a precious human life, and I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to use all my energies to develop myself, to expand my heart out to others, to achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all beings. I'm going to have kind thoughts towards others. I'm not going to get angry or think badly about others. I'm going to benefit others as much as I can. Take a moment now to set whatever motivation, whatever intention feels comfortable to you in this moment. Making it clear in your mind. Whatever you want to leave this practice with. Motivation itself is not so important as the clarity of whatever your motivation is. Take a moment to put it into words and stay with it. And we close by dedicating towards all those beings that we have thought about. Dedicating that they too might have the conditions one day or in future lives to come into contact with the Dharma, with any teachings. And to train 
their minds to become free of cyclic existence. Dedicating that one day all beings might be free of samsara and the suffering realms might be totally emptied. Dedicating also to the swift return of our teacher, Lama Zopa Rinpoche. And also dedicating to Dr. Ambedkar, whose anniversary is today. Dr. Ambedkar Saab was also a strong Buddhist practitioner. And may many more beings like him continue to come into this world and benefit beings. May we ourselves also be of most benefit to sentient beings. May we become Buddhas so that we can continue benefiting sentient beings until samsara ends. And as you gently come out of your meditation, see if you can maintain the thread of your meditation into the rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>